Welcome back, High Tech Lab here. I bought this Temco hydraulic crimping tool quite a long time ago, and I've been using it for our business every day to make battery cables and whatnot. And it's kind of at the point where it needs to be rebuilt. It's leaking hydraulic oil out through the pump. And um, if you notice it has a yellow handle, that's because I may have broke the welds at this point once before, and I stole the handle from my cheap Chinese tool. Well, I'm a little tired of constantly having to pump this thing. It's been a lot of workout for the last year or so. So I got here in the background this air actuated hydraulic foot pump. Uh, this is from Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. And instead of just rebuilding this and making it work the exact same way it has before, I'm actually going to modify this and make it so that it runs on this pump. And essentially all I have to do is step on the pedal to pump and release. The nice part about these hydraulic tools is the, the piston in here is spring release. So when you release the, uh, the actuator, um, a spring pulls it back down. So for this pump, we can do this with one hose operation um, because the pump will force the ram out and the spring will push the fluid back to the tank of this pump. So without further ado, I'm gonna make a total disaster mess of my bench and I have a uh, garbage liner down here to make things easy. Uh, first things first, I'm gonna close the release and pump this as far as I can. And the reason I'm doing this is because this handle inside is actually a reservoir. So by pumping the, um, this all the way, it's actually gonna move all the fluid. And I can actually unscrew this handle now. So with that handle removed, you can see inside, this is that bladder. And if I actually hit the release, you'll see it gets a lot bigger. It, it inflates that. So that's where it's storing the fluid. There is a release here at the end um, to let all this fluid out. So I'm going to transition to going over the garbage can and get all this fluid out. So from here, I just sprung a mess all over. These blue shop towels are definitely going to come in handy. Um, I'm going to take this handle off. So there's two circlips. Now I don't have the proper circlip pliers, so I'm going to try and make do with just some needle nose. Okay, now we can remove the handle. And now I can probably pull the pump out. And then this O-ring here holds on the rubber bladder that acts as the tank. So I pulled that off and now I'm gonna go over the garbage can, but this should pull right off. Jumping forward a little bit, I went ahead and unscrewed this top yoke deal here. And here is the spring that actually returns this back to place. And now, in theory, I can pop this cylinder out. I just got sprayed in the face. Looking inside of here, I know it's hard to see. There's two ports in here. And this one right here actually has a Phillips looking shape on it. And it looks like it unscrews. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that pulled out now. So out of that hole came this little stopper here. And as I mentioned, yes, it is a Phillips tip, but also in there is the spring. And I think that has to do with the uh, release mechanism. So let me dump this over. Yeah, two, four, four springs actually. There's a little spring, um, a little ball bearing, a big ball bearing, and a big spring. This part that I'm gonna call a doohickey that used to hold the handle well, this pretty much stripped out on the way out, but it's okay. There's nothing going on inside of the body here, so we're in good shape. I tried taking out this uh, hex shape uh, piece that is part of the pump. That's not coming out. I had it in the vise. I had a cheater bar. I did about everything. It's not really a hex shape anymore. I tried the half inch impact with a lot of oogadoogas. Did not get me anywhere. So next thing I'm gonna take off is this here relief valve and I already broke loose this port right here. But I wanna make sure to get this on camera because it's always good to see where what part came from. Another small ball bearing for the relief valve. So they are using ball bearings 
um, to do that. And now essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill this up with weld. I'm gonna soak it in a parts washer first. And this right here, I'm probably gonna get the seals out, um, clean it up with a carbide burr and also plug this with weld. And then one of the holes down here, I'll drill out and tap. And that will be where I connect the hose that goes to the hydraulic pump. Now I'm not entirely sure what material this is made of, um, but there was a magnet, a little tiny one, here it is. Um, and I do know this material here is magnetic. You can see this little magnet sticks to it. So they did have this magnet in the body to catch any metal chunks that come from, uh, you know, using this tool. So that's nice to see that, that at least if there's any metal chunks, they, uh, you know, get contained to the magnet instead of floating around within the tool. So yeah, now I'm gonna take this to a friend's house, get the holes plugged up, and in theory then, we'll just have our cylinder, which I'll put a new seal on, because the, the kits come with new seals, and then I'll have my port that goes to the pump, and my spring to release it, and I'll be good to go. Before I go too crazy on the cheese whiz with the welding, there was a couple of things I did real quick. I just went to the vise with a drill. If you look, there's two holes up here, um, I drilled these out to 3 8 so that I have a nice little area that I can uh, fill with weld to plug those two holes. You'll also notice there's a new hole in the center here. That is a 3 8 hole that carries all the way through the inside. If I get the angle just right, you can see down through there. And um, that is going to be where my hydraulic fluid goes through. Additionally, on the side here where the relief valve used to be, that I went ahead and drilled out to 7 16 There's a little bit of thread left, but I'm essentially gonna tap this with a quarter inch NPT uh, tap, and that'll allow me to put a pressure gauge in here. So I can have the feed in of hydraulic fluid from the bottom and a pressure gauge here on the side, and that should work out real nice. And then this piece right here that used to be the pump, I could not for the life of me get this out. And I mean, I put it in the vise, I used a cheater bar, I used a uh, half inch impact gun. It's not coming out. So I'm just gonna work with it. I'm gonna fill this with weld, so that's plugged. This is the old part where the handle was mounted on there. Um, and that's about it. So yeah, once I plug these two holes on the bottom here, I'm gonna grind this bottom smooth and then I can drill this middle hole out to 7 16 and put the same quarter inch NPT threads that then go to the pump. On the pump side, we have a 3 8 pipe thread. I'm gonna be using this thread sealant that I got just from Tractor Supply and I'm gonna be threading in this uh, this swivel elbow here that my hose is then gonna go into. Now the hose is a quarter inch hose, so I also have a uh, bushing here that I'm gonna be using. So that'll go essentially like this into the, uh, into the pump assembly. Well, here is our piston valve body. You can see that nightmare there is all welded up now. I've got my quarter inch pipe thread hole in the top all drilled out. I've got another quarter inch pipe thread in the side for a pressure gauge actually. Um, that's drilled and tapped. And then uh, the inside's all fine and good. So now we're ready to get the hose in here and get the piston in and the rest of this all assembled back together. Well, here we are. Pump comes up to hose. I've got some dies loaded in here. And now it is time to 
hit the pedal and let it rip. Let's see what happens. Ooh, it works! Ooh, -hoo -hoo -hoo. that is literally perfect. Super easy. Wow, that is actually better than I expected. How perfect.